Welcome to GL Kids. I hope you're ready to have a good time because we've got some exciting things in store for you today. But let's start out with prayer, which is the most exciting thing, talking to God. Dear God, thank you for giving us ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to believe. Thank you for bringing us together as a church, even though we're in many living rooms. We are all together as one church in our heart. We want to hear your word today, God, so that we are more like Jesus than when we started. And everybody who agrees with that says, Amen. We're going to do our memory verse, Romans 8, 28. And we have some really great friends that are here to help us with that. Are you ready? Take it away, friends. I hope you're having a great day today, and I'm going to read you the Bible verse. <coughs> Romans 8, 28. And we hmm. know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Good job. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Romans 8, 28. Today's big idea! When life is bitter, God's love is sweet. Well, it's springtime here in the garden, and we've got lots of weeds, and we got to be cleaning up some stuff from the fall. And Mr. Keith has been working on the garden beds, and he said he was really thirsty. And he asked me if I would bring him some lemonade. So I have this lovely glass here full of lemonade, so refreshing and cool. It's going to help him feel so much better. Mr. Keith, I brought you your lemonade. Would you like to take a big drink? Oh, what did you do? No, what was that? Lemonade! No, that was not lemonade. Yeah, it was. I made lemonade. No, how'd you make lemonade? I put lemon juice in a cup. Just lemon juice? That's lemonade. No, you gotta add water and sugar. Oh, okay, let me try again. Well, Mr. Keith didn't like his lemonade, so we're gonna have to see if we can follow his recipe. I've got everything here. I've got my pitcher. You know, the pitcher represents us. This is our life and it's empty. But when we have the lemon juice that we pour in, that's like the bad things, the things that sour our life and make us feel bad, the things that happen that are not good. And I think Mr. Keith was right. That wouldn't have tasted very good. You know, when we just concentrate on just the bad things and that's all we think about, we can become very bitter. Just like that lemon juice was bitter, our hearts can become angry and everything we see makes us angry, even if it's not a bad thing. We become bitter. But, just like this pure ice spring water, when we dilute all that bitterness by reading the Word of God, let's fill that up. When we read the Word of God, we find out who God is in our life. You know, um... Our Bible verse says that all things work together for the good of them who love God. So we think about that and we realize that the bitter things in our life, diluted by that word of God, that scripture, Romans 8, 28, we begin to see who God is. And as we understand who God is and that he has good for us, even when bad things happen, he is going to make it out to be good for us. Then we get into this sugar pitcher. Oh, this is the good part, right? We put that sugar in there. This is the sweetness of God, that even when bad things happen, God still loves us. That sweetness that the scripture tells us. Without the scripture, we wouldn't understand who God is. But when we read the scripture, 
then we understand the goodness of God. But I wouldn't want to drink that yet, would you? I don't think so, because it's not stirred up yet. So we take this spoon and we stir it. This spoon is our faith. We say, God, I trust that in my life, you're going to take those bad things because by your word, I understand who you are. The scripture says, Romans 8, 28, that you're going to do good things for me. That sweetener in there, I understand, God, that even though there's bitter things in my life that happen, you want good for me and you're going to work it out. Maybe the bad doesn't go away, but God, you're there with me and you're loving me and you're comforting me. Now, let's see how this tastes. I've got Mr. Keith's cup. I'm going to take a little preview. Oh, that is delicious. The recipe for a good life. When bad things happen, remember what God's word says and let us remember the sweetness and the love of God. And by faith, trust him that even though there are bitter things in our life, it's going to be delicious when God gets involved. It's going to come out good in the end. Let's take this out to Mr. Keith and see if this tastes better, okay? Come on out with me. Okay, let's try this again. With that beautiful, delicious lemonade that I just made, let's see if this works better. Mr. Keith, I took your advice, and the kids and I went into the kitchen and made you some lemonade. So why don't you try this? <laughs> I I'm promise. Not for that again. I promise we did a good job. We worked together and we made it. Take a big, nice drink. Smell it. It smells good. Go ahead. Taste it. You can trust it. Oh. Drink it. <laughs> mm. That's good. All right, good. We did a good job. Very refreshing. Today's true story is about somebody I know. It's about my dad. My dad was called Brother Joe by everyone. He was a pastor for over 50 years, and he loved Jesus. When he got old, he got very, very sick. His kidney stopped working, and he had to go to the hospital three times a week to be hooked up to a machine that would clean his blood. It was actually very painful and made him very sick. But he didn't complain, and he kept the love of Jesus in his heart, and he showed the love of God to everyone. When he would go to the hospital, he would smile and joke with the nurses and try to brighten their day, even though he wasn't feeling good. One day, a man named Harold sat down next to him at the hospital. He had the same disease as my dad. And Harold was hooked up to another machine, and they sat next to each other for quite a long time, every day for weeks. Harold was not a nice man. He would yell and curse at the nurses, and he screamed at everyone. He was very angry, and he was not kind at all. My dad decided that he was going to be Harold's friend. Even though my dad didn't feel good, he knew Harold didn't feel good either. And so, trusting that God would use him, my dad started telling Harold about Jesus and showing him how sweet the love of God was. Harold did not want to listen for a long time, but after a while, he and my dad actually got to be friends. And it wasn't long before Harold accepted Jesus. You see, my dad didn't like let the bitter things in life get him down. He knew that in every circumstance, God was using everything in his life, the good and the bad, to do good for God, and that everything would work out. And that's exactly what happened. My dad was so excited to tell the story of meeting Harold and leading him to Jesus. You see, if my dad hadn't been sick, he would have never met Harold, and Harold might never have heard about Jesus. I don't believe that God made my dad sick, not for one minute. But God uses everything in our life for good. And it certainly was good that Harold learned about Jesus. So see, when my dad trusted and let the joy 
and the sweetness of God be in his life, even though there were some bitter, bad things. God used that for good. My dad understood this, and I hope that we will learn this too. In the Bible, it says in Psalm 23, 4, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not fear evil, for you are with me. When you're sick, when you're scared, when my dad was hurting, he didn't have to fear, and neither do we. We know what the Word of God says. We understand it, and through faith we believe it, and we know that God will work everything out for our good. When we are sad, when we're tired, when we have a heavy burden, Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You see, God is with us in the good times and the bad times. He never leaves us. If we're so tired, we can't carry the weight of sadness in our hearts. We don't have to because God is there and his sweet love will help us. His comfort, his kindness, he never, ever leaves us. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, And God is faithful. When you are tempted, he will provide a way so that you can endure. Sometimes people say, God will not give us anything that we can't endure. Actually, there's a lot in life that is so heavy, I can't carry it. I can't take care of it. I can't endure it until I give it to God. And then God's strength is what helps me carry on, not mine. See, those bad things and the good things and the everything in between, when we are faithful and we believe God's word, he uses those things to do good in our life. Let's pray together. And if you don't know about God's love and his joy and peace in your heart, and you would like to know Jesus, you can do that today. All you have to do is pray. Just talk to God wherever you're at. He is there and he will listen. You can say I'm, that you're sorry for your sins, that you want to do different, and you want to be right in his eyes. Ask him to forgive you, and he will do that. It's that simple. Two sentences. And then Jesus will begin leading you. If you do today, say a prayer and ask Jesus to be in your heart. Please let me know. Put it in the comments below or message me. I would love to get in touch with you so that we can begin learning about Jesus together. Let's all pray together now. Dear God, thank you that we were able to gather here today and learn about your faithfulness and your sweet love. That when life is bitter, your love is sweet. And that everything in our life can work together, even when we don't understand what's going on. We can have faith knowing that you are working things for our good because we love you. Help us this week to show your love to others and explain to others that you are working around them for their good. Help us to have a fabulous, smashing, wonderful week, God. Thank you for helping us change and learn and be more like Jesus. And everybody who agrees with that says... Amen. I will see you on Thursday for a Zoom meeting. We're going to have games and a devotion and we'll pray together and we'll get to meet with all our friends. I cannot wait to see you guys. Bye-bye.